Crisis Radio. This is Webster Tarpley reporting from Washington, D.C. Now, as we mentioned already uh, at our uh, the beginning of the program, it is May 1st. It is International Labor Day. This is when the working people are supposed to feel their oats. And we have reports that the Greek finance minister, Varoufakis, was certainly, I, I think, the only finance minister to go out and take part in the demonstrations of the working people. And that happened in Athens uh, already earlier today. But uh, don't let me take the time. Let's give the floor to Michael Chiotinis, our excellent and uh, time-tested correspondent in Athens. Michael, welcome. Hello, Webster. And Hiya. that's that's true. Uh, he went out there and he, he took part in the... Um, you know, the, the, this whole... Um, the demonstration. Demonstrations. Now, uh, first of all, let me remind uh, our listeners where things are at the moment in Greece. In, in February 20th, as you remember, Greece and its European partners, uh, lenders or institutions, supposedly arrived at an agreement. They set a plan for a short-term deal. Uh, why short term? Because between the left government in Greece and its partners in Europe, as you can imagine, the difference of opinion on economic policy is huge. So, the very moderate and good willing uh, Greek finance minister, Varoufakis, uh, we just mentioned him, he said, let's start with whatever it is we can agree on and leave the harder stuff for later down the line uh, when we will have built some trust between us. So since then, since February 20th, they've been working on the specifics of this short-term deal and on a basis for a mid-term agreement. Uh, let me uh, do a quick note here. We'll never say that a long-term agreement is struck until the issue of debt restructuring is addressed. Now, where are we now? Negotiations for the specifics of even this short-term deal haven't yet arrived anywhere. Uh, they can't agree. Time is running against Greece because the European Central, Central Bank has uh, effectively freezed liquidity for Greek banks under technical excuses uh, already February, uh, early in February. And the Greek economy is being strangled. Uh, this brings us to the inescapable conclusion that the prolonged duration of these negotiations, it's been more than three months now, uh, is something absolutely intended. It's not an accident. I don't believe it's an accident. No, we can blame it, no, we can blame it on the Greek government. In fact, Alexis Tsipras said very clearly in an interview this week uh, that the only reason we don't have a deal yet is because the, the institutions insist on things like deeper cuts in pensions, uh, an increase in the value-added tax, a regressive tax, forgetting the planned ban on foreclosures. Uh, they want huge budget surpluses and the rest of it. So this stall by itself is an attempt by the lender institutions to strangle the Greek economy and thus blackmail the Greek government to make concessions. The clear picture is that they don't, they don't want to have an agreement. Uh, they want to have the Greek government surrender to austerity policies. And we're not talking about reversal of austerity here. For, for starters, we're talking about avoiding even deeper austerity. Now, there are two important things that, I need to be, that need to be stressed regarding the goals of the lender institutions in this process of negotiations. Number one, their only goal is to humiliate the Greek government politically, and continue imposing the same policy as if elections were never held. And number two, in order to do that, they are trying to get rid of Varoufakis. Uh, Varoufakis is a very annoying opponent to have because he's extremely qualified and understands the economics uh, better than well, almost anyone of his colleagues in the Eurogroup of finance ministers. And he's more people-friendly than they can tolerate more of a populist, you like. Right. After, now, after the, the Eurogroup in Riga, Latvia, in which Varoufakis was uh, impudently, let me say, bullied 
by the the other euro area finance minister uh, he tweeted the famous phrase by Franklin Roosevelt from his uh, 1936 re-election campaign. They are unanimous in their hate for me, and I welcome their hatred. It's actually the forces of organized money yes. are unanimous in their hatred, and I, I welcome their hatred. I also noticed that, I think I mentioned last week, the Italian edition of Huffington Post, the whole front page was completely a diatribe against Varoufakis. They... Uh, they were playing with him as some kind of a jet set glamour boy, but then it turns out that he's he's more serious. And now they've all turned against him. They're all screaming yes. that Varoufakis yes, you, must go. So he must you, be doing something right. Yes, of course. You may have heard something like Varoufakis is out of the picture also. Right. And uh, Cyprus has taken over. Yes. Let me say that's not true. It's pure propaganda. Uh, Prime Minister Tsipras made internal changes having to do with the co- coordination of the negotiating team, and that's it. Uh, Varoufakis is still in charge of negotiating policy, and by all means, still a finance minister. So, why do they hate him so much? I need to say something, maybe not as important for uh, international affairs, because after all, we're talking about Greece, a small insignificant economy, but this may increase the morale of common people, disillusioned with politics. I was standing here yesterday, in Athens, Greece, listening to my government's finance minister talking about the need to outlaw naked credit default swaps. Uh, Specifically, addressing the parliament, he said, the lender institutions are telling us about the moral hazard of stopping foreclosures, because then even those who have the ability to service their mortgages will have the incentive to stop paying, because it will be immune to foreclosure. And they don't care about people being thrown out of their homes. Why, instead, are we not talking about the moral hazard of naked credit default swaps? Absolutely. And on an institutional basis, you can ask Schäuble about this because Schäuble banned them temporarily in Germany in the summer of 2010. That's the so-called Leerverkaufer, right? Yes. Naked credit default swaps. He said that naked credit default swaps are essentially like someone being able to get fire insurance against his neighbor's house, giving him an incentive to want to see his neighbor's house burned. Uh, We need, he said, we need to ban this kind of instruments internationally, but we can start by banning them in Europe. And for now, we, we will seriously consider banning them in Greece symbolically to make the issue public. He also said, and, uh, and, and, and that's the start, because credit default swaps are one of the least toxic derivatives out there. He said that in Parliament. So I hope people can feel that politics is not a dead end. We shouldn't be nihilists. And I hope they can also see why Varoufakis is personally being attacked by elites and puppet politicians. And also maybe why he was cowardly attacked by anarchists while dining with his wife in that uh, restaurant in downtown Athens. I don't know if you've heard about that. No, we need the details. What, did, what happened? Some anarchists went into the restaurant and bully, uh, threw things against the wall. Um, the goal of this attack was to provoke him to call the police, I think, which would then lead to the usual clashes between anarchists and the police, making, making this a news item worldwide, humiliate and pressure the Greek government. Uh, or create an atmosphere that the Greek government is unpopular in some way. Uh, Now, one last thing I would like to add is that, as we learned yesterday, this is breaking news, the Supreme Administrative Court of Greece has ruled that cuts in pensions are unconstitutional. Ah, good. Excellent. All right, Michael, that's a very interesting report. We'll see you again next week.